Good morning, class. You are welcome to today's lesson. Last week we talked about demand and its attributes, and we looked at demand elasticity. We also found out the determinants of demand elasticity. We realized the importance of demand elasticity to the manager, and we concluded with demand forecasting. Demand normally goes with supply in economics. So today we want to move on to talk about supply. Our topic today is supply analysis. So for our outline, we'll look at the meaning of supply, we'll look at the law of supply, and then supply function and equation. Then we'll end with the determinants of supply. Right, so let's look at the meaning of supply. Supply of a commodity refers to the various quantities of the commodity a seller is willing and able to sell at different prices in a given market at a point in time, other things remaining the same, or ceteris paribus. So supply is what the seller is willing and able to offer for sale. So if a seller is willing to offer something for sale but is not able, it's not considered as supply. And if he is able and he is not willing, also it is not considered as supply. So the next thing is the supply curve. Um, a supply curve is a graphical representation of how much of a commodity a firm sells at different prices. That is a supply curve. Normally, a supply curve is derived from a supply schedule. So let's first look at this supply schedule. It's basically a tabular representation of how much a firm sells at different prices. So for a price of at a price of five, the quantity supplied is ten. At a price of 8, the quantity supplied is 18. At a price of 10, the quantity supplied is 25. And at a price of 13, the quantity supplied is 36. Do you observe any trend here? Maybe you guessed right. Um, when a price increases, you see quantity supplied also increasing. And vice versa. When a price decreases from 13 to 10, you see the quantity supplied also decreasing from 36 to 25. So there's a relationship between price and quantity supplied. We, it, it, they have a positive relationship. As one variable increases, the other variable also increases. Because of that, the supply curve slopes positively or it slopes upward from left to right, showing that when price increases, quantity supplied also increases. Right. So the supply curve is upward sloping from left to right. Now the law of supply, it explains the relationship between price of the commodity and quantity of that commodity supplied as we've talked about. So the law of supply states that an increase in price will lead to an increase in quantity supplied and vice versa, ceteris paribus. So when price increases, quantity supplied must increase and vice versa. However, there are some exceptions to the law of supply. And the first is fixity in supply. Fixity in supply. So, at some point in time, price can change, price can decrease, but you would have to supply or you have to sell what you have. That is an exception to the law of supply. Assuming you are a farmer, you have produced tomato, a perishable commodity, and um, you you go to the market and you realize that the price of the commodity has decreased and your tomato will also perish if you don't sell them would you decide to not sell because the price has decreased or you still sell them anyway you will because your tomato perishing will not earn you any profit so that is an exception to the law of supply and one other exception is the backward sloping supply curve of labor Yes, so um, labor offering, labor as in workers offering their, their skills and their services for employment is supply of labor. Now, normally when workers are employed, they, when, if the wage is high, they are willing to offer their, their, their efforts, their skills for employment. So initially, what happens is when price, which is the wage of labor, 
sorry wage which is the price of labor when it increases then there is high supply or there is increase in supply but then when labor gets enough funds it gets to a point where he wants to enjoy leisure so even if you increase the salary he is not willing to work more hours so at that point there is a backward sloping supply curve of labor though wage is increasing labor has reduced his hours of work so that is um, also another exception to the law of supply now we move to the supply function so the supply function we normally use letters to represent um, all the variables so s here represents supply f means it's a function of and px is the price assuming the commodity is called x so this is how the supply function reads supply is a function of px what does it mean it means that supply depends on price that means when price changes it changes up supply so um, normally a function can be translated into an equation so this is the equation the difference between a function and an equation is a function has an f here which shows that um, this is dependent the the variable on the left hand side is dependent on the variable on the right hand side also so this is our supply equation qs which represents quantities are supplied is equal to alpha plus beta px now defining all the terms qs as i mentioned is quantity supplied of the good and px is the price of the good assuming the good is called x alpha alpha is autonomous or constant or intercept of y axis what does it mean it is the part of supply that is not dependent on price so um there there, there is a commodity you buy whether the price increases or not you there is a quantity you might buy so that is represented with the alpha and the beta is the slope it's um it's the percentage uh the, the percentage change of supply as a result of a change in price so for everyone there is a, per, a percentage of reduction in your supply when price decreases